2006, the readers of the British Medical Journal voted for the greatest medical advance of the last 200 years. They didn't choose surgery or anesthesia or the pill. They chose the toilet. Not maybe a fancy toilet like this one, which comes from the World Toilet Organization, that's the other WTO um, expo. <laughs> But a basic flush toilet has probably added 20 years to the Western human lifespan. <laughs> However, in 2012, 2.6 billion people have no sanitation whatsoever. Not a toilet, not a bucket, not a bag, not a box. That's two out of five people who have to do with something that looks like this. That's a lot of crap lying around. Why does that matter? It matters because shit is a weapon of mass destruction. It can carry 50 diseases, viruses, bacteria, E. coli, cholera, you name it, it loves to travel in shit. For most of us in this room, we think diarrhea is a joke. Maybe we get it from a dodgy kebab or a bad takeaway. It goes away in a couple of days. It's the squits, it's the runs, it's deli belly. But every 15 seconds, something as stupid as diarrhea kills a child somewhere in the world. That's 1.1 million children dying every year from something banal and stupid. It's the second biggest killer of children in the world. It kills more children than HIV AIDS, TB, measles, or all those three things put together. It's not just children. In sub-Saharan Africa, 50% of hospital beds are filled with people suffering from what is known as water-related diseases. They're actually poop-related diseases. And why can't we say that they're poop-related? Because we're too embarrassed. Because governments think that voters don't want to know about toilets. So do charities. You'll see a celebrity standing in front of a shiny water tap gushing out clean water. But I've never seen Angelina Jolie standing in front of a toilet. However, that toilet that she won't stand in front of um, reduces disease by 40%. That's twice as much as clean water alone. A toilet can do so much for you. It can put you back in school. 20% of children, girl children, drop out of school because they don't have a toilet and they don't go back. It can put you in work. Um, governments lose 5% of GDP to hospital costs and absenteeism due to poor sanitation. It can earn you money. If you invest a dollar in sanitation, you save $8. That's a bargain in health economics. And if all that doesn't persuade you, it can get you laid. A toilet in India um, is now being used in a social campaign um, which has been dubbed No Lu, No I Do, because brides refuse to marry into a family that doesn't have a toilet, and it's working. <laughs> it's not just a toilet that can save your life. Poop itself can actually save your life because it carries beneficial bacteria as well as all those nasty bugs. This is an operating theatre in Brooklyn, New York, and that woman is about to get a dose of donated human feces. It's called a fecal transplant, and most surgeons have exactly the same reaction that you just did, which is why it's hardly done anywhere. However, it's got a 91% success rate. She's been suffering from a superbug called C. diff for years and suffered horribly. She's tried all sorts of antibiotics, she gets a dose of poop, and she's cured in half an hour. That sounds dramatic, but it's true. Poop can also grow your food. It's a great fertilizer. We eat food, we excrete it, and we excrete nutrients like potassium, phosphate, nitrogen. Apparently, if you pee on your orchard, you get very crunchy apples. <laughs> In Rwanda, they um, get 75% of their cooking fuel from biogas, which is um, taken from digested sewage from prisoners' latrines. These are actually a bunch of genocidal murderers stirring sewage, um, which is then going to cook their dinner. And yet, in somewhere like the UK, routinely, every wastewater utility just burns off methane. The minute we started putting our waste, as we call it, into clean drinking water in the mid-19th century, we started uh, neglecting the fact that it was a resource. We saw it simply as waste. And we stopped talking about it. We put the toilet behind the locked door, and we shoved it out of conversation at the same time. Does it need to be that way? No, it doesn't. In Japan, they've had a toilet revolution in the last 70 years. 70 years ago, they used pit latrines. Now, as routine, they have something called a washlet toilet. There are more washlet toilets in Japan than there are personal computers. Um, they have an inbuilt bidet nozzle, which is, uh, cleans you better than toilet paper, and I know because I've tried it. <laughs> they have heated seats. They have um, an automatic lid-raising function, which is known as the marriage saver. Um, <laughs> 
but most importantly, what Japan has done is, is decide that the toilet is talkable. It's a normal household product. It gets innovated. It sees creativity applied to it. Um, and they talk about it. 30 years ago, HIV AIDS campaigners faced a similar problem to sanitation activists. They had an unspeakable subject. What did they do? They carried on talking about it and talking. Now we can say sex, we can say condoms. What we need to do in the face of a public health emergency is to talk shit. We want more talking and less killing. Thank you.